Eric was an ordinary man who loved his job and family. His adult life was going well. Working in the field of logistics provided a stable income, and his cozy house, located in the suburbs, was always filled with joy. Together with his wife Lisa and two children, they were happy, at least on the surface. However, behind this facade there were problems that no one noticed. A few months before the events, Eric began to notice that his sleep was becoming restless. At first, it was the usual sleepless nights. He blamed everything on stress at work. But things soon got much worse. Every night, as soon as he fell asleep, he began to suffer from strange nightmares, so realistic that Eric became afraid to sleep. It all started with dreams, where he wandered around an old house that seemed both familiar and alien. The gloomy rooms were filled with horror, but he could not find the source of this fear. Gradually, the dreams became more and more saturated with details. He saw violent scenes, smelled smells, and even felt pain. These nightmares were no longer just dreams, they became a reality from which Eric could not escape. One night, he woke up in a cold sweat with the feeling that he was being followed. He didn't know why, but he instinctively felt that these dreams were not just a consequence of his fatigue. They were warning him about something. Eric tried to talk to his wife about it, but Lisa just laughed, blaming everything on overloads at work. In the end, Eric decided not to share his feelings with her anymore. Gradually, without sleep, he began to fade away. His face turned pale, and deep dark circles formed under his eyes. But that wasn't the scariest part. Nightmares began to penetrate into reality. In his half-sleep, Eric heard voices, saw shadows on the periphery of his vision. They were everywhere, at work, at home, even when he was driving. Over time, Eric realized that his night visions always come back to one place, to the house. He didn't know what kind of house it was, but he was sure he needed to get there. One night, after another terrifying nightmare, he woke up and decided to act. Eric found the address of this house by checking it with the details from the dream. The address turned out to be real, and now the only thing left to do was to go there. Eric chose one of the cloudy days to go to the sinister house. The weather was perfect for his mood. Gray skies, torrential rain, and a feeling of oppressive silence. He didn't tell Lisa where he was going and just left a note that he would be back late. When he got home, Eric realized that he had been here before. This place was abandoned and was located on the outskirts of a small town. The rusty gate creaked when he opened it, and the path leading to the house was overgrown with weeds. The house was in a depressing state, broken windows, a sagging roof, walls covered with cracks. But Eric felt he needed to go inside. When he crossed the threshold, the cold enveloped him, as if all the warmth had been drained out of the house. The air was heavy, and there was a musty smell of rot and mold in it. Suddenly, in complete silence, he heard a grinding noise. It was a familiar sound from his dream, the creaking of the floorboards, as if someone was walking around the house. Eric went into the first room and stopped. The walls were covered with creepy inscriptions. It looked like someone was trying to communicate something important, but the text was chaotic. Among them, the phrases stood out. They are always watching, you are next, you will not come back. These words were written as if they had been left by a man in a panic, leaving his last warnings. Eric continued walking through the house. Soon he found himself in the hallway leading to the basement. The basement looked scary, but Eric couldn't stop. His legs wouldn't obey, they just moved forward, as if someone was controlling him. Descending the stairs, he found himself in a spacious room with a low ceiling. There were old tools, chains, ropes lying around, and there was a huge metal table on the floor, which was stained with rust and something darker. In the corners of the room were the remains of things that obviously belonged to people. Among them were old shoes, torn clothes, and even children's toys. The walls of the basement were riddled with cuts and dents, as if someone was trying to get out. Eric froze in place, his brain trying to process what he saw. Suddenly he heard footsteps behind him. But when he turned around, there was no one there. Fear gripped him. It seemed to him that someone was watching him. Then the basement door slammed shut. Eric realized that there was no way out. His breathing quickened and panic began to build. At that moment, his gaze fell on the corner of the room where an old diary was lying on the floor. Eric, trembling, walked over to it 
and opened it to a random page. There were notes on the battered pages that explained everything. It was the diary of a man who, like him, had come to this house in search of the truth. The recordings told of kidnappings, torture, and death, about how unknown people used this house for their dark deeds. But the scariest thing was in the last recordings. They know you're here. Never look into the eyes of someone who is coming for you. At that moment, there was a creaking sound behind Eric, and he realized that his nightmares were a warning. He wasn't alone. Someone was with him in this house. Eric stood paralyzed with fear, unable to turn around. My heart was pounding like it was going to pop out of my chest. The creaking was repeated, this time closer, and now it became clear that someone was slowly approaching him. Panic was building in his head, and the words from the diary echoed in his mind. Never look into the eyes of someone who will come for you. He closed the diary convulsively, throwing it on the floor, and turned around abruptly. Emptiness. There was no movement, but the air around them became noticeably heavier, as if with every second the house was filled with something invisible, ominous. Eric backed up against the wall, feeling fear squeeze his insides. In the dim light of the flashlight, which he held with a trembling hand, it seemed that the shadows around him began to move slowly. He tried to convince himself that it was just a trick of the light, but his subconscious told him otherwise. The silence was broken by a heavy metallic clang. Eric jerked to the side and saw that the chain that hung on the wall was swaying slightly, as if someone had just touched it. There was a soft, almost whispering sound in the air, like a barely audible moan. It was unbearable. Soon the fear became so palpable that Eric decided he couldn't take it anymore. He needed to run, as fast as possible, but his feet seemed rooted to the floor. He knew that if he stayed even for a second longer something terrible would happen. His mind was foggy, his eyes were closing themselves from fatigue, but every time he tried to blink, images of creepy figures, broken bodies and chilling screams appeared in front of him. Eric made a dash. He rushed to the stairs leading back up. He desperately tried not to think that someone might be following him did not turn around, hoping that if he just kept running, he would escape. But when he reached the top floor, his heart almost stopped. The door was locked. Panic overwhelmed him. He started hitting the door with force, knocking on it with his hands and feet. But it wouldn't budge. The realization began to grow inside that he was trapped here. That this house doesn't want to let him go. The heavy breathing behind him made him freeze. Slowly, fearfully, he turned his head towards the source of the sound. There, in the semi-darkness, stood a figure. Unlike the ghosts in his dreams, this was a real being, alive but horribly distorted. The creature's eyes were empty, but its body seemed to throb with hatred and pain. His hands were clutching a rusty axe, and his face was distorted in a terrible grimace, as if every muscle was fighting against nature itself. Eric tried to force himself to move, but his legs refused to obey. The entity was slowly approaching, each step accompanied by a loud creaking of the floorboards. His mind screamed that he needed to do something, but fear paralyzed him completely. He remembered the words from his diary, Never look into the eyes of someone who will come for you. But he couldn't look away. When the creature came close, Eric finally let out a desperate scream and tried to break through to the door one last time. He threw his whole body at her, but the moment he did so, the creature's axe flew over his head. Everything froze for a moment. Silence filled the space, and time seemed to stop. Eric screamed again, and the door suddenly opened with a bang, as if some force had allowed him to leave. He fell out of the house onto the rain-soaked ground, panting and crying in fear. He didn't remember how he got to the car. His hands were shaking when he tried to start the engine but the car started the first time. With the roar of the engine, he tore away from this terrible place, leaving it far behind. It's been a few days since that terrible day. Eric tried to forget everything that had happened, to convince himself that it was just a nightmare. But every night reminded him of what had happened. The nightmares returned, but this time they became even more real. Every time he closed his eyes, he returned to that basement again heard footsteps, felt the presence of something creepy. He tried to explain to his wife what was happening to him, but her sympathy quickly turned to misunderstanding. 
Lisa thought it was all the result of stress. Her support had dried up, and now Eric was left alone with his fears. Everything that happened in that house didn't let him go. One night, when he woke up in a cold sweat, he heard the same creaking of the floorboards, the same sound that haunted him in that house. He slowly went downstairs and saw the door to the basement, which he had never noticed before. This door was exactly the same as the one in the house of his nightmares. Eric froze in front of the door. He knew that this was the end. Whoever came for him, then did not leave him.